Um, my name is Javid Summers. Um, I'm going to introduce myself in a little bit. Uh, but for now, as Kevin said, I want to lead us in acknowledging the treaty and land uh, we belong to. Uh, I think we're fairly spread out today, uh, mostly on numbered treaty territory, I expect, although maybe not exclusively. Uh, so for those of you who want to, I would invite you to put in the chat um, an acknowledgement of the land you're on. Um, and um, and then I will share my reflection here um, based on the particular treaty and land I belong to, um, but I'm hoping that you will find resonance um, in these comments for your place and context. So as a settler in Edmonton, Alberta, I have the privileges and responsibilities associated with living in Treaty 6 territory. I acknowledge that the land I live, work, worship and relate on is land that indigenous peoples have lived on since time immemorial and that was generously shared with my ancestors and with me. I acknowledge that although treaty was entered into with the expectation of relations that would be mutually beneficial, in fact, Canada has dispossessed indigenous peoples and continues to do so today. The Canada that dispossesses can seem abstract, but I acknowledge that I am Canada and that Canada is my people. For this dispossession, therefore, I acknowledge my responsibility, both as an individual and as a member of the Settler Collective, and I commit to working to change that and restore the spirit and intent of treaty relations in all of their optimistic vision. Thank you. Thank you, Javid. Um, Sean, would you like to open us in a word of prayer as well? Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And thanks, Javid, for that acknowledgement. Thank you all for being here this morning. And I just invite us as we, as we begin to, um, to just calm our minds and our hearts a little bit. If it helps to close your eyes, that's fine. Just take a few deep breaths. And as you breathe, you think about the land beneath our feet. Think about the treaties that allow us to be here and that negotiate relationships between us and among us. We give thanks for the peoples who have lived here since time immemorial. We give thanks for the ancestors, ancestors ancient and more newly arrived. We give thanks as well for all the more than human people who are with us. The plants and the animals, the waters and the winds. We give thanks for the presence of elders among us, of their work and lives that sustain us. And as we gather here, we ask the creator to be with us. Bless us, O Holy One. May your spirit move among us, bind us together, guide our words, our decisions, our actions. Help us live together in a new way and a good way for the sake of the healing of all creation. As we pray in the name of the one who is love, Amen. Thank you, Sean. It's a good way to begin. <clears throat> well, I'd like to um, invite, we're going to now share some of uh, introductions about ourselves, the Prairies North uh, Committee or Coordinating Committee. And uh, today I expect is a time for um, conversation and sharing and maybe even reconnecting if for some of us who've been uh, disconnected for quite a while. And so uh, we're going to try not to talk too long as a coordinating committee because we want to listen and hear uh, what's going on with each of you as well and uh, allow you to speak with each other as well. So I'll just begin with uh, by introducing myself or actually I'll begin by introducing the committee and saying that first of all, 
we are all volunteers. <laughs> we do not work for Kairos Canada, but we are uh, passionate about the kinds of work that Kairos is involved with. And so we volunteer some of our time to help uh, activate these, this network and help make sure that uh, these connections can flourish. I'll let the members speak for, the, for themselves about what else they do. For myself, I'm, my name's Kevin Gunther Trewine. I'm a pastor in the Mennonite tradition and I'm on Treaty 6 land in the Edmonton area uh, at Lendrum Mennonite Church. And uh, I come to Kairos, um, well, I grew up in Grand Prairie, Alberta, so I'm from this region, and I moved out to Ontario later for grad school. I learned about Kairos when I was out there, and then moved back here when I, I worked, began working as a pastor at this church. Um, I've had some involvement off and on with Kairos over the years, especially since I've been at this church. Um, we had Jennifer Henry, the previous director, come and speak at our church. We've, um, we did, some of us learned, uh, we're facilitating the blanket exercise. And I've been out to Ottawa for the um, a mass blanket exercise one year. And, uh, and so my my connection to Kairos has always been a little bit oblique, a little bit off to the side, but uh, when this spring, um, I'll get into that more later, but when, when Shannon uh, called us to uh, gather and see if we could do something to, um, to build up this network, I agreed that this was a good time to start doing that. So. That's a little bit of my history with Kairos and uh, where, where I'm situated. Now, I'll turn it over to, um, who do I wanna pick on first? Amanda, you haven't spoken yet. Hi, okay. is it my turn to speak? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my internet is in and out, so I, oh. I missed my introduction. Sorry about that. Um, hi, everyone, I hope I'm coming through all right. Uh, my name is Amanda Dodge, and I'm Secretary of the Coordinating Committee alongside Kevin, Sean, and Javit. And um, my role is the program director with Mennonite Central Committee, Saskatchewan. Uh, MCC has a formal partnership with Kairos Canada. And of course, our work and values are quite aligned around the peace and justice work we do as a Christian organization. And um, <clears throat> I'm relatively new personally to connecting with Kairos. Um, I'm thankful to Shannon's efforts uh, coming to Saskatoon and uh, wanting to re-engage folks of like minds and uh, came to the potluck that she coordinated pre-pandemic. I don't even remember when, because it was just before the pandemic um, and just got involved that way and grateful uh, to, to be so. Should I pass it over to someone, Kevin, or will you? Oh, um, let's go to uh, Sean next. <laughs> and then come back to Edmonton. Hey folks, Sean Sanford Beck. Um, I am a, let's say, I'm an ecumenical priest, which is complicated. Um, I'm working right now for uh, St. Andrew's College in Saskatoon. I'm the recruitment officer and I wanted to, uh, I'm actually, I'm working with Kairos on, on St. Andrew's time. So I wanna acknowledge St. Andrew's and bring greetings from the college whose values are often very closely aligned with uh, with Kairos, so it's a really good um, good fit for me. And I've I've been both in the midst of and around the edges of Kairos for many many years, ever since it, it became Kairos out of the uh, the previous um, justice coalitions. And I just really value the work of of Kairos, and most of all, I value the people that I get to meet through through the Kairos connections. You folks are an awesome group of, of people, whether or not you actively identify as Kairos or whether you're for your folks in partnership with, with Kairos, you're just a great group of people. So very happy to be here and, uh, and doing some stuff on your behalf and with you. And how about you, Javid? Well, good morning again. Uh, my name is Javid Summers. Um, like I said, really excited to be here. My, my, uh, it's my first annual gathering. My first Kairos event ever was, was in November of 2020. So, um, just getting involved in Kairos, I guess, still, uh, still a rookie. And um, honestly, it's been one of the highlights of the last year for me. Uh, as Sean said, uh, the work and the people are, uh, are really great to get to know and be involved with. So uh, I already mentioned I'm a settler uh, living on Treaty 6 territory here in Edmonton. Uh, my day job is, is working with Treaty 6 First Nations um, in Alberta for the Government of Canada. 
Uh, I'm an accountant and I have a master's degree in Native Studies from the University of Alberta. And as part of that degree, I, I wrote a thesis on Treaty 6 um, relations. I belong to uh, First Presbyterian Church here in Edmonton. I am uh, very passionate about uh, fighting colonialism in Canada and working towards uh, mutually beneficial relations uh, between settlers and Indigenous peoples. I became the treasurer of Kairos Prairies North in August, um, and I, I will have a report in that capacity in a couple of minutes. Uh, nice to be here and uh, to meet you all. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sean, Javid, and Amanda. Um, now I'll just share a little bit about who we are as a group. How did we come to be? So I went back in our notes and I saw that in April this year, um, Shannon invited us to a, an information potluck. We couldn't have a, an in-person food potluck, but we were able to have an info potluck and just share um, people from across Kairos, no, Prairies North, shared sort of what they were up to, what was going on in their lives. And um, out of that, a uh, few of us, the ones that you've just heard, were um, kind of stepped forward to help be a coordinating committee. Uh, in May, we began meeting monthly, so this is still pretty new for all of us. Um, and one of the first things we thought of doing or needed to do was begin planning this event itself <laughs> so that we could sort of reactivate the Prairies North region. Uh, so that meant things like planning this meeting, uh, setting up an email account, which I think all of you have probably received an email from. Um, choosing some roles, so I'm the convener for the group. Uh, Sean is the treasurer, uh, Amanda is the secretary, and no, Sean, Sean is the external up to national <laughs> person, and Javid is the secretary, and Amanda, Amanda's the secretary, and Javid is the uh, um, treasurer. If that's not clear, we'll make it clear later. You can tell why it's too early in the morning for me. <laughs> Um, after so we've been working on those kinds of things meeting only once a month for about an hour at lunchtime so we try not to let this overwhelm all of our work. Uh, and then in August, the a sort of side group uh, that's associated with us but uh, was organized or animated with in connection with Javid and Amanda, the decolonization group had an event in um, Fort Carlton, I think, yes. And out of that, we realized we needed to have a bank account. <laughs> and so that was uh, what led to some further discussions and setting that kind of stuff up. And Javid, because we have a bank account, is going to now give a bit of an update on our um, very simple financial statement <laughs> or matters. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Uh, that's funny. I, I think I said I became the treasurer in August. I guess it was technically May, but it feels like. Uh, sort of the treasurer activities started in August when we opened that bank account. So, um, yeah, Kevin and I are the signers on that bank account, given that we're both here in Edmonton. Um, for this year to date, all of the financial activity in the region has uh, related to the, the activities by our affiliate, the Decolonization Group. And Amanda will talk about that group a little bit more in a bit. There's certainly many more people than just Amanda and me on that, but, uh, but that is the connection to the coordinating committee. Um, so that group actually has organized three events um, this year, with the third one being this afternoon. Um, and uh, they did a lot of fundraising to support uh, those events, and then also utilized some of a $1,000 grant that Kairos Canada uh, has for the regions. Uh, we're still reconciling uh, some of the expenses and revenue from these events. Uh, I think at the moment, my calculations show we're uh, well, that, that group has spent about $3,000 on those three events. Um, most of that's honoraria. Uh, and they raised well over $2,000. Um, and most of that came from other nonprofit organizations in the region, um, such as churches and I think a couple of colleges and, and so on. Uh, so most of those transactions were handled by Kairos Canada on our behalf, uh, as Kevin sort of alluded to there. But now that we have a bank account and a treasurer and signers, we're, we're going to be able to be a little bit more independent, I hope. 
Uh, I do expect to finish up the year with a, uh, a surplus of a few hundred dollars, something in that range. And most of that is, is already designated to support the decolonization group again in um, early 2022 with a, what would be a fourth event at that point, I think. Uh, in 2022, we also expect to receive another 1,000 from Kairos Canada. And uh, Shannon's here, so she can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is there is a uh, potential for asking for additional uh, funds if we need them. So uh, I am interested towards the end of today hearing, this end of this morning hearing if, um, you know, to what extent financial support might be helpful uh, in local activities and if, and if the coordinating committee has a role uh, in that. So, um, and oh, I definitely don't want to encourage fundraising and kind of explain how that can work. So, um, so I am able on behalf of Kairos Prairies North to accept e-transfer donations at that uh, Gmail address that Kevin alluded to. And uh, we'll make sure it's in the chat, I think uh, at some point here, but uh, so I can accept e-transfer donations there. And in theory, cash and check could be possible too. I would have to provide a mailing address probably or, or pick those up in person, but, but that could be possible. Uh, but the big thing is we, we cannot issue tax receipts for donations received in the region. So for donors requiring tax receipts, we should encourage them to donate directly to Kairos Canada. Uh, exceptions would be like churches or like I mentioned, other nonprofit organizations, they shouldn't have to worry about tax receipts. So if they want to support our work, they could e-transfer directly. Um, and anyone wanting to donate by credit card or securities or anything complicated or exotic uh, should just donate directly to Kairos Canada. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have. I uh, wish it was a bit more formal. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm used to providing more formal financial updates, but, but that's what I got for now. Thanks. Um, so before we move to the next piece, um, just noticing the chat, somebody, uh, Catherine asked, are there individual memberships? And Shannon replied that uh, everyone who's on the email list is considered at a member or participant. And uh, Shannon says she'll talk about that more when she gives her update in a bit. All right, thank you, Javid, for the financial um, news, notes. They're not quite a statement, but notes. Um, and um, you can see that near the end, after, we're gonna do updates from the regions next. So each of you will now get a chance to share just some of what's been happening in your region, um, loosely connected to Kairos initiatives or independent. I know a lot of groups are not as active as they had been, but uh, we wanna hear what's going on in the regions. And then after that, we wanna have a round table discussion about um, what we should be doing going forward. And that's, um, that's where some of what Javid was talking about, um, if there's things that we need um, sponsorship for, if you need a, a bit of funding to, you know, kick off a, a project or something, that's where we can talk about those kind of things. So keep those in the back of your mind. So now I would like to invite someone from the Regina group. I think it was Dan Beveridge was going to share a little bit about what's been happening in the Regina Kairos region. Hi folks. Uh... Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, I, I, I sent in my, um, my report. I don't know if there's any advantage to putting out on the screen, but I'll, uh, I can proceed. Um, <clears throat> uh, the Kairos Regina local group is located in Treaty 4 territory and it's submitted by me, Dan Beveridge, the convener of the group, along with Kathy Cameron, who is here today, as, who she's our recorder. Nick Jessen, Communications, who's not able to be with us today, and Laura Stewart, Climate Change Working Group Chair. I, I see Laura is here today. So um, we've had uh, 16 meetings uh, beginning in June 2019 and running up until November of this, of this year. Uh, preliminary meetings with, uh, first of all, with Shannon, and then another to establish the Regina group, and thirdly, um, a meeting to establish our terms of reference and two working groups. And um, uh, we had uh, several individuals, folks um, who registered as Kairos companions and two church bodies became Kairos communities notably the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Regina. So since then, we've had 13 monthly meetings. 
Um, most of them about eight or 10 people uh, attending. So most of our activities are, are in the working groups, which meet uh, separately. <clears throat> so first of all, the rec rec Reconciliation and Indigenous Rights Working Group set, uh, had several meetings before COVID. Um, then um, a couple of them uh, joined the Saskatoon-based KPN Indigenous Justice Subgroup via Zoom, and uh, the Regina group basically dissolved as the KPN group became more active in, in organizing uh, events, which I'm sure you'll, you'll hear about shortly. The, the, secondly, the Climate Change Working Group has been very active and uh, regularly held monthly meetings, and it includes uh, members from not only Regina, but Saskatoon and uh, one from Herbert. It uh, hosted uh, For the Love of Creation Climate Conversations launch in February via Zoom with 24 registered. We're quite happy with that. And it inspired in May and June another For the Love of Creation set of two Zoom sessions at Wesley United Church um, and a worship service at Wesley and a noon hour Zoom session at the University of Regina Lifelong Learning Center with uh, 36 uh, registered. I use the word inspired to, to mean that the, they were not actually planned and organized by Kairos directly, but these would not have happened without Kairos and the For Love of Creation program. Uh, the uh, working group promoted the FLC advocacy campaign before the federal election was called. It hosted a train the trainer work uh, a session. Uh, it uh, inspired a school grounds tree planting project. Uh, several Regina public school board trustees are quite interested and they're discussing it, discussing it in their committees. And uh, the Regina Catholic School Board also is being approached. Uh, trees, of course, being one way of uh, sequestering carbon and dealing with uh, climate change action and uh, education. Our, uh, the committee is also sustaining an interest in the city of Regina plans regarding the emerging energy and sustainability framework. Uh, there's also a group, a discussion group at Broadway United Church. They decided to provide a copy of the Seth Klein book, A Good War, to all Saskatchewan MLAs. Uh, maybe sometime they'll find out if anybody actually read it. I, I really do hope that they, they do read the book. Very good book. Okay, other activities. Uh, we maintained em membership in the SCIC, that's the Saskatchewan Council for International Cooperation, uh, and attended the AGM, but potential benefits, uh, so far we haven't actually used them. And of course, several of us attended the Kairos 20 anniversary event in October and the For the Love of Creation Fall Symposium, October 30th, all via Zoom. It's, it's a little heavy for some of us to, to take in all of those <laughs> hours. Okay, finally, hopes for the future. Regarding climate change education and action, the For the Love of Creation program this past year has demonstrated the amazing and inspiring potential of Kairos, Citizens for Public Justice, and about 35 other faith groups cooperating together at the national level in three key areas, local and congregational engagement or education, political advocacy, and theological reflection. But Currently, Kairos and For the Love of Creation have very little connection with local churches. The challenge now for Kairos Regina is to help the For the Love of Creation program connect, connection, really important word, connect more meaningfully with church congregations, both urban and rural, so they can, number one, carry on education to learn, learn about climate change justice issues, Number two, participate in political advocacy, making public statements, uh, that is municipal, provincial, and federal government levels. And thirdly, engage in action projects such as tree planting, solar energy, et cetera. So to conclude, I thank Kathy, Nick, and Laura for all their contributions and Shannon for all her support. And uh, 
Thank you. Thank you, Dan. That's a that's a really positive way to start this today, and glad to hear all the activity that's going on in Regina. It's great. I was taking notes about, uh, especially about that challenge you you noticed, and we'll maybe talk about that later. Next, I would like to invite Wendy to speak for uh, Lethbridge, if Wendy's on on, and if you're uh, able to. Sure, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, and I'm joining you from the traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy. I should have started by saying Oki, uh, which in Blackfoot is um, hello. Um, so I'm on the traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, which was part of Treaty 7. Um, so there is really no formal uh, Kairos committee here in Lethbridge. There are um, a few of us who uh, our members uh, remain as members of Kairos, but we're, are, we're actively involved with, um, out of MacKillop United Church, there is the Justice, Peace and Social Action uh, Committee. So we're more actively involved with them in um, things that we do. Um, and for the past year, perhaps maybe year and a half, our main focus has been um, uh, doing some work and being collaborating with a number of other uh, groups on um, uh, the um, plans for uh, reintroducing coal mining in the um, eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains. Um, uh, so we've been collaborating with a bunch of other groups such as the um, uh, uh, some wildlife and other um, conservation groups. There's um, also some uh, pop-up groups that have started, such as Together Alberta, um, Alberta Beyond Coal, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, we've been in part of um, letter writing campaigns and a couple of demonstrations and um, held a lot of um, uh, uh, meetings and gone to a bunch of um, things um, that have happened with um, uh, some of the landowner groups that are directly affected, uh, that are directly abut the lands that uh, the government of Alberta through an Australian corporation uh, that is looking at uh, doing open pit coal mining. Um, so we've been primarily uh, working on that and, um, and most recently within within the last couple of weeks, um, uh, Justice, Peace and Social Action um, has members who are uh, seconded or representative on the uh, United Church's Living Into Right Relations Committee. And um, as um, part of that, uh, that work, um, a film has recently been produced here uh, by the Kainai First Nation um, with regards to the um, uh, to the opioid crisis. And so there have been a number of public showings of, um, of those films and we had uh, Reverend John Snow come down and uh, uh, facilitated discussion afterwards um, on, um, uh, on the devastation um, that, it is, uh, that it is obviously causing um, in, in, in the communities and um, how to dig deep into our, um, into our soul and our psyche and um, uh, concentrate on um, right relations and, and compassion and um, uh, things like that. Um, we are a small group. I think maximum of about maybe 10 people uh, meet monthly, um, except during December and during the uh, uh, summer holidays from uh, June, uh, June, July, and August, we don't meet. Um, but they do carry on with some activities during their that time, uh, some of the women are also part of the Raging Grannies. So we, we go out and sing at rallies and do stuff like that. Um, and that's basically, that's basically what we've, we've been up to um, in the Lethbridge area. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. It's good to hear from you again. I remember a few years ago, you and I were working in a group together on, um, the calls to action and uh, the curriculum in at Alberta. And of course that was a different curriculum <laughs> than we're dealing with now, but uh, it's good to hear from yes. you again. Yes, good to see you again too. Uh, my, my regrets, the device that I'm on now uh, does not have a camera. Oh. Um, and, I, and I was on my phone before, um, but the battery was starting to die out. So I uh. switched to this instead. Yeah. Good to see everyone again. I remember Dan from uh, uh, a number of years ago um, and even some gatherings 
uh, regional gatherings that the Regina group had uh, had organized. So it's good to see old folks and Shannon and and see new people too. Thanks. Um, next, we'd like to hear from someone from the Athabasca region and. Um, it's possibly somebody from the Right Relations Committee, but if not, we have maybe Sean will speak to them for them if, if there's no one from the Right Relations Committee. Well, then, Sean, maybe go ahead. Um, they have a really good reason for not being here. <laughs> oh, maybe Julie wants to speak to that. So. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Is it the Right Relations Committee of Northern Spirit Regional Council or is it a different? Oh. Sorry, Northern Northern Spirit? Uh, yes, it is. That's that's who they're connected with quite a bit. Okay. Uh, well, let me just say very quickly, first, it's awesome to see everyone and hear a bunch of voices I haven't uh, heard in, in many years. And uh, I'm the staff support for the United Church that includes the Being Good Relations Network that uh, covers all of uh, the treaty territories of Alberta, actually, and into Peace River Country, Um those treaties in, in BC and up to Yellowknife. And I've, Sean can probably add stuff. I don't know, but I just wanted to follow up on uh, what Wendy was referring to and, and note that we um, participated in, in an action around the Alberta curriculum specific to the, the commitments of the TRC calls to action. And um, I, frankly speaking among friends, got a completely BS answer back from the government justifying itself, a lengthy one. So at least we forced them to write that. But um, all, the, all the congregations in Chinook Winds and Northern Spirit were invited to participate in that, and a number did, and I only got one email complaining that we shouldn't be getting involved in politics. I'm not sure where that person's been spending their time in the United Church, but uh, yeah, so it, it, we, it feels like we need to come up with some follow-up, but I think that was one small thing we could at least offer and a lot of involvement in Orange Shirt Day and a lot of interest in, in connecting with Kairos and gladness that this this group has uh, has resurrected and and uh, just needing to figure out some stronger connections I I think um, blanket exercise of course in association with Kairos is something that comes up a fair bit a lot of uncertainty about where that's going and, and the desire to eventually have a meeting with Shannon and others to help us sort out understandings. And maybe that just needs to be an ecumenical meeting, not a, not a United Church only meeting. So with that, I'll turn it back over to, to Sean, but uh, thank you all. Yeah, thanks Julie for, for that update, piece of update too. And I, um, I know that uh, Cecile uh, Pausak, who who is the person who's our our contact person in the Athabasca region, yeah, they they mentioned uh, that well, she mentioned that she and her spouse Bruce Jackson wouldn't be able to be here today because they're actively working with the. Um, so I'm just reading my notes so I get this right. The keepers of the water society and the public library to hold a water for life, water for strife conference in Athabasca concerning the impact of climate change on water in Alberta um, with a focus on Indigenous perspectives. So they, they're they heavily active. And as Cecile mentioned, and I, I this came up as a theme when I was talking with Wendy too, and it's great to hear from you again, Wendy, the sense that um, there have, both in Athabasca and in Lethbridge, there had been very active Kairos groups, and now there are very active Kairos people who are not really doing Kairos groups so much, but doing all the work that is associated with, with Kairos. And so um, I know there's been lots of uh, um, treaty type events that, that uh, folks in Athabasca have been part of. Um, as Julie mentioned, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're linked in with the uh, Be Good Relations leadership group. And also um, Cecile mentioned that they, she's the secretary for the Remembering the Children Society, um, that has, they've been involved for over 10 years with researching and commemorating the children who died at the Red Deer Indian Industrial School and were buried in the uh, Associated Cemetery. Um, so they're, they've been doing a lot of work around that. So there's lots of stuff going on. I do apologize that I can't give you all the details. Um, uh, but just to, to know that this type of work is active and, and ongoing in, in Athabasca and in places where there's not necessarily a formal Kairos group. It's still good Kairos work. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, it is good to hear. And, um, and 
Um, that really is in keeping with what I understand about Kairos, that this is a, a network of people of faith and goodwill. I, I like that phrase and I want to keep using it, that um, we are uh, we want to hear what people of faith and goodwill are up to all around our region. Um, speaking of that, the next one I was going to ask about was the Grand Prairie region, Peace River, Saskatoon, etc. And um, I don't mind sharing that I was uh, trying to be in touch with somebody from there. And in my email exchanges with them, um, they said, you know, with COVID, they have not been actively meeting together as uh, over the last two years. So they didn't feel they had anything to report. If there's somebody from that region here who would like to share, um, I would be happy to turn it over to you. But um, well, um, but they seem to be a, a, a passionate group up there. And um, they were um, when, in talking with Shannon, I'll maybe put you on the spot a little bit, Shannon. Shannon said you would hear from them once in a while when they would, you know, have a fundraiser and send in money. And so it was really just a very encouraging group to have that, you know, even though we were not as actively coordinating the Prairies North region, um, there are still people who care up in Grand Prairie where I was born and uh, they're working and uh, involved in raising funds and doing their part as well. So wanted to acknowledge that. And I'm going to just find the one email I had from someone, from Helen McDonald, who said um, they're, I, they're involved in projects like refugee sponsorship and, um, and other social justice issues through their churches. So that's that there is a group up in Grand Prairie. Um, and maybe our part of our work, which we'll talk about later, is how to re-engage and maybe pass this on to the next generations. The next group we wanted to hear from, oh, and Amanda, you're back, <laughs> is um, the decolonization group. Just in time. Yes, that's right. Let the, let the Lord hold the internet connection uh, for now. Um, yes, I'm so pleased to share an update uh, about the newly formed Kairos Prairies North Decolonization Group, uh, which is made up of settlers committed to dismantling colonialism with the goal of facilitating educational conversations among other settlers from primarily Christian faith communities about decolonization and systemic discrimination in order to equip learners for advocacy and action. Over the last year, we've planned three educational events that prioritize Indigenous voices and create safe space to unsettle settlers. So just a few words on our history. Um, in the fall of 2020, Kairos Prairies North, as we know, didn't have a coordinating committee. So Shannon approached a few of us with some history or connection with Kairos to pull together an annual gathering. And uh, Kathy Cameron, Mark Bigland Pritchard, and I, as well as others, came together to, under Shannon's leadership to plan an event uh, a learning event that focused on the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and Canadian Law, and it was called Embracing Indigenous Rights, Bringing Life to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And it was a two-part online event on November 22nd and 24th, which I was realizing is almost exactly a year ago uh, this weekend. And at the event, we heard from lawyer Sonia Eggerman, activist Michelle Brass, and had a bird's eye view from Marianne Morrison, um, and a good turnout, about 100 registered and a number attended. Um, we prioritize small group discussions, seeing value in learning together. And one of the objectives of that event was to inspire and equip attendees to participate in individual or collective action around UNDRIP in Canada. And so folks who wanted to take action after the event were to put their names forward. And uh, so a number did, and I was uh, to coordinate them. And that's how our group came together. So uh, in December 2020 and January 2021, we had our first meetings where Javid Summers, Trevor Harriet, Tegan Brock, Sandra Blankensop, Jordan Cantwell, Julie Graham uh, joined Mark and Kathy and I at the table. And um, we, at that point, Bill C-15 had hit the floor. So the legislation to um, put UNDRIP into Canadian law, essentially. And our first thought was to do advocacy. So we started prepping meetings with MPs, but we quickly realized that there was such a range of perspectives on the bill. And indeed, that our own organizations uh, weren't taking a position on it. So we decided to take an educational approach instead. 
We wanted to create neutral space to hear varying Indigenous perspectives on the bill. And we were just delighted by the incredible Indigenous women who came to the table uh, or to, who came to speak at the event. Um, we had Judge uh, Mary Ellen Terpel Lafond, Akkui. Uh, and Sylvia McAdam, Sesuesham, among others, uh, for our event, which was called Bill C-15, Step Forward or Step Back, which was held online on Tuesday, March 16th. And we had a huge level of interest in this event. 600 people registered, um, and about 200 did attend, and another 200 watched the video afterwards. Um, so it was exciting to be facilitating, um, you know, public dialogue around an issue that were on a lot of minds and hearts, and to be hearing Indigenous voices um, speaking to these issues. So um, after that event, uh, we did in May, we did some light strategic planning. Uh, we named ourselves the Decolonization Working Group and developed a framework for action, which named our objectives as facilitating educational conversations among settlers and newcomers about decolonization, systemic discrimination, and intersecting issues to equip for advocacy and action. We want to create safe space to unsettle settlers and prioritize Indigenous voices without burdening them. Um, and uh, we want to do educational sessions and advocacy and action-oriented work together. So we decided to keep our momentum going and plan a summer event. Uh, we chose to focus on land, uh, problematizing crown land, and deepening our understanding of treaty relations and the land. Uh, it was summer, COVID was abating, we decided we could hold this in person, and we did so um, at uh, Fort Carleton. Uh, Trevor Harriet extended an invitation to the Treaty Land Sharing Network, uh, who agreed to partner with us, uh, much to our delight, and Mary Smiley joined our planning group. And so together we hosted Decolonizing Ourselves, Land and the Spirit of Treaty at Fort Carleton on August 7th. And we had about uh, 75 registrants, uh, approximately 45 to 50 people were there, and uh, they were in small groups that circulated among the learning stations. And we had amazing speakers yet again. Elder Maria Campbell spoke, uh, Bushi family lawyer Eleanor Ch Sunchild spoke, spoke um, and our own Javid Summers and the Treaty Land Sharing Network's Morley Mayer. Uh, so it was a fantastic event. This fall, we've been focusing our energies on planning this afternoon's impactful and delightful event, uh, Decolonizing Ourselves, Rediscovering Treaty with the Earth, uh, with speakers Reverend Dr. Stan McKay and Reverend Dr. Bob Haverlick. Um, in closing, I'll just say it's been such an honor working with this amazing group of human beings um, and the meaningful learning opportunities that it's provided all of us and the folks who have, who have engaged um, have been so rich. I think that what is working well with our group is that we share a commitment to decolonization personally and often in the work we do outside Kairos. Uh, we are committed to disrupting the mainstream narrative and pursuing shifts in power and systemic change. Uh, our group members are all doers. Um, everyone contributes to the larger effort, their knowledge, their abilities, their, their relationships, um, and, and move into leading roles and supporting roles uh, as, we, as we go uh, through our work. Uh, we're also well organized and uh, we, we seem to really like each other. We have fun together. So um, it's just been a great experience. We welcome all interested folks to the table. Uh, we have members across Saskatchewan and Alberta. And if people are interested in joining us, they can contact me. Um, I will pop my email in the chat. And I think that's it, subject to any questions or additions. Is that a clap or a hand raise there? I see, I see some, some thanks, awesome work. Um, great, thank you, Amanda. And that's the decolonization group. And um, it's, it's an amazing group and we're looking forward to hearing more from them later today. Um, I have to confess, I missed the um, Calgary region. <laughs> so we're going to go back to Calgary before we hear from the Treaty Land Sharing Network uh, as well. So, Clint, would you like to give an update from the Calgary region? Well, you know, you're in Edmonton, so um, <laughs> missing Calgary is probably uh, common. Uh, anyway, the... Um, it's very interesting to hear Wendy talk about how she's meeting with 10 people in a group, uh, but it's not a Kairos group. And it's interesting to hear that um, the work is, work is being done, um, but outside of Kairos around the region. The Kairos group in Calgary is, is um, non-existent except 
we set up a subgroup some years ago on uh, homeless issues, uh, housing issues, and Doreen Cott is here from that group. Um, uh, several were informed of it, but it looks like Doreen, you're the you're the one, and um, she can speak to that. What has happened to the Kairos group is um, attrition. Um, a very important person died. Um, uh, another has uh, moved to be closer to grandchildren and white, moved to White Rock. Um, a couple have had serious illnesses. Um, one of our, our key members, uh, Ryan Anderson, uh, left the Kairos group and is the staff person for the Calgary Alliance for the Common Good. And um, uh, they're an interfaith group that uh, has a social justice wing um, and um, has taken over a lot of the various concerns. Um, we have um, the Snow Brothers. Uh, you mentioned John Snow earlier. Somebody, Wendy, I think, mentioned John Snow. And John and Tony, um, uh, they, they're, they're from the um, Stony Reserve here. They're both uh, proceeding through uh, the United Church uh, clergy formation <laughs> route, and uh, they're excellent, excellent fellows, and are available and would be willing to travel anywhere in the region. I'm sure to uh, to speak to indigenous issues and and assist. They certainly are great um, with people in in Calgary, and uh, and so anyway, uh, Tony works with Hillhurst United Church and is the um, is one of the driving forces in the right relations group there, which is not restricted to United Church at all and uh, continues the indigenous work. Uh, we have a, a climate group in town that's very active and, um, and again, is, is much broader. Um, uh, Bob Hawksworth, politician, po political type is, is part of that, Bill Phipps, um, uh, several others, uh, Joe Vipon, um, these, these guys uh, they, and women, uh, they, these people are doing uh, a lot on climate change um, issues. We have, Wendy mentioned the coal mining issue. Um, a lot of, um, and, and you've mentioned the, uh, the proposals for a new curriculum in Alberta. The, a lot of the energy seems to be uh, over against um, the non-united conservative party in, uh, in this province. And we're all uh, earnestly hoping and praying that um, they will not represent Alberta again. Um, I, I don't know what else to, uh, to really say. Um, the Kairos Committee says the Catholic Church has withdrawn into other concerns. We have a new bishop in the last few years who has different priorities. And um, yeah, so the Kairos group per se is non-existent except in the, um, in the guise of uh, what was a subcommittee and is now <laughs> the committee, the, uh, the Kairos Homeless. Um, concerned group. And uh, Doreen is here to, I, I hope, Doreen, you're going to speak to that uh, and what you're doing. You're muted, incidentally, Doreen. Okay. Um, Doreen, if you're, if you're prepared to speak, we'd love to hear from you about the uh, homelessness uh, working group. I can add to that. Uh, off the cuff, I guess, by the sound of it. Um, we can call ourselves Kairos Affordable Housing Working Group, officially. Uh, the other name is called A Place to Call Home. And as Clint mentioned, this happened about 12 years ago. Uh, we were discovering that uh, we had people moving in and out of housing and we were rescuing right and left from our church which is Parkdale United Church and uh, at that Kairos meeting I think Clint was there 
uh, the man from the drop-in center said do housing. Well, at Kairos, we said we have no budget. It was very interesting. We couldn't own land. Uh, we couldn't give uh, charity refunds. So we started 12 years ago. And now we are a collaborative uh, outfit working with partners, Calgary Homeless Foundation and their subsidiary home space that handles our land title because we couldn't buy land and we couldn't give charity. So home space does it. And we work with cops whom we now have hired to do our residence uh, in the building. And we now are working with four uh, low income apartment buildings for Calgary's highest acuity people, mostly off the street or shelters, mostly indigenous, although we don't talk about that a lot. So we've been able to really follow through with our truth and reconciliation uh, goals here. So basically, uh, Kairos is housing about 800 and some people. And uh, we, uh, and, and that has involved uh, a lot of building maintenance and involved with the programming and individual support. We've had a wonderful opportunity to work with people doing uh, reconciliation guidelines, all, all 94 of them. You won't believe what we've come up with. We've eaten all sorts of foods and built TVs, t uh, TVs and done smudging and gone canoeing and and I'm leaving as soon as this is over to house a lady that's been in the shelter and the baby's arriving Thursday by cesarean. So I got a busy weekend. So Kairos is very involved in Calgary in a very big way. Thank you, Doreen, for that update. That's really good to hear. That's great. Um, I, yeah, we'll have to connect more in a bit, and I'm glad you made time in your day for, for us for that. Now I'd like to hear from the Treaty Land Sharing Network. I'm really excited to hear from you, a bit of a preview of what we're going to hear or of what your group is about before we hear more from you in depth in the afternoon with the decolonization group. Um, I'm expecting Emily and Martha, Emily Eaton and Martha Robbins to share a little bit about the Treaty Land Sharing Network. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to do the sharing. And then if anyone has any questions, then Emily will. We just decided five minutes was too hard to get. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, my name is Martha Robbins. I'm from Treaty 6 Territory um, in Saskatoon, which is Nihiwak, Anishinaabe, Stony, Nakoda, and Dakota Territories and homeland of the Métis. Um, today I'm at uh, Little Manitou Lake and I'm not sitting in a sauna, though it looks like it. Um, it's just a, a pine cabin. Um, and uh, I know that uh, Mary Smiley has been the, um, the, the contact person and the connection between the Treaty Land Sharing Network and Kairos. So today um, you're just seeing a couple of new faces. I know quite a few folks in this group, and but not everybody. So thank you for welcoming us here. Um, and Emily Eaton is here as well. And you can see she's, there she is. Um, so the Treaty Land Sharing Network is a group of farmers and ranchers and other landholders who have come together to begin the crucial work of honoring treaties. And in the spirit of sharing the land, we welcome indigenous people to access the land that we farm to practice their way of life. Um, and we are committed to implementing the treaty relationship, engaging in ongoing learning together. And um, as we practice being treaty people together. And we're also intent on establishing a different way forward for rural Saskatchewan, um, <clears throat> which has been known, of course, for um, uh, deep-seated racism, among other things. Um, so in, I'm just going to give you a brief update of where we're, what we've been up to for the last year, because I think Mary um, <clears throat> um, presented at your, uh, at your meeting last year. So I won't give you the full scope of what we've been up to, but just in the last year. Um, we've hosted a number of uh, gatherings on the land with, uh, with elders and knowledge keepers. Um, and then in, on July 15th, 2021, we had our public launch at Bladworth. 
Saskatchewan, which is uh, Mary Smiley and Ian McCurry's farm. Um, and it's right on the border of Treaty 6 and Treaty 4 territory, which are the uh, treaties that we currently um, have um, network land in. Uh, more than 70 people attended the, the launch and it was a pipe, it began with a pipe ceremony. Um, we had sharing circles, uh, a press conference because it was our public launch and then we shared a meal together. And we had wonderful media coverage coming out of that. Um, just, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm hopeful that you've seen some of it, but we had everything from um, Moose Jaw North Battleford papers to the Western producer to the Globe and Mail at the national level. So um, we were really happy with the, with the media coverage from that event. Also in the last year we've developed, and, and this is um, before leading up to the launch, we developed the logo for the uh, Treaty Land Sharing Network. And I have to say that that was a, longer process than the coordinating committee anticipated. Um, designing by, um, uh, by consensus is a long process. <laughs> so, uh, but we arrived at a, at a logo that people are happy with. And we also developed a website, which you can find at treatylandsharingnetwork.ca. And maybe Emily, you can put that in the chat. Um, so we have a, our, our website went live as well on at our launch on July 15th. Um, we, um, we designed and got um, got printed uh, signs, aluminum signs for uh, land title holders to put up on their land when they join the network. Um, and we've distributed over 50 of those so far. Um, and uh, going into the launch, we already had a number of, uh, we already had quite a few uh, land title holders signed up with the network. And we've had coming out of the launch, a uh, significant interest um, and, and more folks joining up. So I think at this moment, we're at 34 locations uh, listed across the province. Um, we've also, we also this past year engaged in advocacy. So we started uh, halt the, we wrote uh, halt the crown, the sale of crown lands open letter and then organized um, to get uh, various organizations to sign on. In the end, I think we had more than 30 organizations sign on to that letter. And then we launched as well um, a petition, an individual petition to sign uh, as well, working on uh, stopping the sale of Crown lands. And then more recently, we've had, uh, coming out of the launch, we also had a lot of interest from other provinces in either expanding the treaty land sharing network or organizing their own version of treaty land sharing networks. And we're still grappling with how, how and what that looks like, um, partly due to our own capacity and wanting, and also uh, because we wanna be very careful that we're not, um, we've had a lot of successes and we're very, very happy with how things are going, but we're also very, cognizant of the fact that we're just actually, despite working on this for three, more than three years, we're just actually at the very beginning stages of, of um, land actually being shared. So the, you know, we don't want to export a model that we don't know <laughs> works yet. So um, uh, with that in mind, though, we did have two meetings um, on October 17th with, uh, with folks from Alberta that were interested in, in learning more about the Treaty Land Sharing Network, and then on November 10th with folks um, from Manitoba that were interested in the network and uh and now what we're what uh what they're working on is whether they can self-organize within uh within those within their groups um and put forward a proposal for pilot projects in those provinces um so we'll see we're going to take this one step at a time and and see what we can what we can manage and how best to 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 continue organizing this network um and then um just two more things to report on. One is we've also we also engage in learning opportunities along the way, and so we run a book club. And this most recently, we've we've um, our book club um, had two meetings. And actually, thank you to Javed for for that as well, participating in that. Um, but we had a book club uh, focusing on the Treaty Elders of Saskatchewan book, and we ran that for two sessions. Emily has it right there. And um, we also just recently, just this last week, had a Buffalo Treaty webinar, um, and and that was that was a wonderful event as well. So we're we're trying to always uh, offer learning opportunities and other ways to engage in the network. Um, so in terms of upcoming 
uh, upcoming items. We are focusing now, we're turning our attention. Last year, we spent a lot of time focusing on um, recruiting land title holders and, um, and trying to move folks that have been supportive and part of the network um, from the beginning from, from being um, participants in our events to actually uh, putting their land uh, up as uh, on the website and being open for land sharing. And so now this year we're, uh, we're focusing more on Indigenous outreach and making sure that, they're, that we are um, creating as barrier free uh, uh, opportunities as possible for Indigenous folks to, to actually access and use the land um, in the network. Uh, so that's that's our key focus for the coming year. And then also, I just wanted to mention that we are also going to be hosting another book club in January, um, uh, focused on Maria Campbell's Half Breed. And so if anyone is interested in joining us for that, um, please, please uh, let us know and we can add you to the list um, to, so that you can get the emails for our events. Um, I think that's all that I wanted to say in terms of updates at the moment. And of course, if you have any questions, Emily and I are here to, to answer and thank you for the space and the time. Yes, thanks for sharing. Are there any questions for uh, Martha or Emily? Thank you so much. Um, let's um, move now into a bit of a round table time. I've been really encouraged by all the stories and I know we want to, oh, one question about how to contact the Treaty Land Sharing Network. That's in the book, in the chat, uh, who is the author of the book. So things are being answered in the chat. Um, yes, let's, let's keep this conversation going by moving into kind of a roundtable discussion. Um, as we were getting to know each other as a coordinating committee and also trying to get to know the uh, region, we were asking ourselves what does the region need? What do we need to be doing as a coordinating committee and what uh, what are the region, the local groups looking for? So um, you've heard from each other. So now I just want to open the floor to anyone who wants to talk about for about five to 10 minutes. We know that people have um, where there's another event coming up and we don't want to take up your whole lunch time. So I'm going to actually maybe shorten it up to more closer to the five minute range. But if you have um, brainstorming that you'd like to do about what what should Kairos Prairies North be doing in the next year or two. Um, let's hear from each other. So I see somebody in the chat online book study is that um, is that responding to the treaty land sharing network or is that about uh, something that our Kairos Prairies North could be doing because um, I think that sounds like a great idea. Just to clarify the 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 um, for the Treaty Land Sharing Network book club, they are all online. We okay. try to do the land events in person. Of course, we we're following COVID rules. So and um, but we did have the launch was our first kind of big event in the COVID world. Um, but that was in July. So now things have changed again. But the the book clubs are all online. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking um, it's good that Shannon's here because uh, maybe we can, if we're doing a newsletter or uh, updates, we can actually, are we able to um, issue an invitation to that? Or is that too broad of an invitation if it goes out through Kairos? I'd like um, Martha or Emily. I think it's probably okay. <laughs> um, we do want to like ensure that people within the network have an opportunity to participate, but so far they haven't been too, you know, over full. Uh, maybe we could just double check with the coordinate, the other members of the coordinating committee and let you know. Okay. And we and can I also talk about, there, there are a few different sizes of lists. For instance, we could email only to the participants of this event, or we could email to certain, just to Saskatchewan or whatever. Yeah, that sounds good, yeah. We'll let you know. Um, as we were phoning around and trying to talk to the different regions as a coordinating committee, we heard a couple of ideas. One was around a newsletter. Um, and uh, there is there is a sort of a newsletter that goes out that Shannon and the national office is responsible for. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about what is this something useful that you would like to hear more um, more about? And what would what kinds of things would you like to go in a newsletter? Or are there other ideas you have for how we could be supporting each other? 
Hello. Hello. Kevin? Hi, Helen. Yes. Yes. It's Helen Northcott from Coal Lake. <clears throat> yes. This is so, this is so uplifting. I'm 79 years old. I'm a survivor of the Indian Residential School. For, I was in from seven years old till I was 18 in the United Church of Canada in Port La Prairie, Manitoba. Hmm. I have been isolated. This pandemic isolation is great to me because I have learned to reflect on my past, to deal with those 11 years. And now this Kairos was introduced to me by TRC when they had a conference in Calgary. And the representative here in Northern Alberta, he called me, he said, do you want to take part in, in, in a conference, TRC conference in Calgary? I said, yes. So he said, through Kairos, he said, you can apply to get funding for accommodations for your travels and your food. So I said, oh, uh, thank you very much. I said, that'd be great. But I didn't use it until I went to Ottawa for another conference for TRC and Kairos helped me with my, my finances there. And, and that was my first introduction to this wonderful group of people. And I live in Northern Alberta, so it's really, I'm really isolated. And to hear such awesome, positive action, I, because of my, uh, my, uh, my, my 11 years in institution as a little girl, and I have lived that racism, they call, and I understand about systemic racism. I am not educated. I have grade 10 education. So, but I have life experience. I have been at, at a, and I re, re, refused the, um, the church and God when they released me from that Indian residential school at age 18. And I did not, I did not read the Bible. I had nothing to do with the church or religion after 18 years old until I was 55 when the light of God came upon me and changed my life. And that, that journey, I, God sent me to the Passion Play in Drumheller, Alberta, and I became part of that group for 10 years. And in that span of time, I have taken off the layers of all what they tried to teach me in that Indian school that, that I believed in. Because as a, if you're told things, you're taught things for 13, 30, 300 days out of the year for 11 years, but a by the time you're 9, 10, you totally believe it. I believe that I was stupid. I was dirty. I was backwards. I was lazy. I was a drunken Indian. And there were worse names that those white women supervisors, they call them, taught me that I am, I was taught that I was going to end up on the streets, that I was no good. I believed it. So when I, I had the light of God come upon me, I, God led me to the passion play. That 10 years I spent living the life of Christ on, when he was on earth, <clears throat> taught me that I'm not any of that. Those were all lies. I'm not. I am not. God gave me a gift in Jesus' name and guided by the Holy Spirit. I am compassionate, caring woman. I became a deacon in a local church here. And I became a reverend in May 2016. But the church in this town in 2008 made a public statement in, the car, in a sermon that they did not want Indians in their church. 
And I was the only Indian in that church after I came to Christ. So when in 2016, when the Bishop of Edmonton came to our, our church to, to welcome in a new priest, she was with me when I had another God visit. And that's when she said, Helen, I want you to contact my office in Edmonton and I want you to start your training in EFM to become a deacon. So I started, but the, the church itself here made a public statement that they did not want Indians in their church. That is something as a Christian that I could not fathom. And I spent many, 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 many nights asking God. The first, the first commandment is to love him with a heart, body, and soul. Totally love him, worship him. The second one is to love one another. What happened in that church, I asked. I cannot understand these. So I have been asked many times to speak at groups of people. I have all, I've also spoke to the school children in the Roman Catholic Church here in, in this town to speak about my life, my 11 years at the Indian Residential School. And I'm always, I'm from Manitoba and I live in Alberta. I have never, never been back to my reserve, except for my mom, my dad, my one sister, my brother's funeral. In the time I was from now, from 18 years old till now, those are the only times because the school taught me that the Indian way is the work of the devil. That we are. We, I could not visit my reserve and my relatives because I was taught that we are all work of the devil. We are evil. I believed it. After 11 years in that institution, I believed it. But I, people ask me today when I speak in front of them, they question me after and they said, how come? How come you're like the way you are? I said, if it wasn't for the Lord our God, he saved me. I understand. I understand. And he even, God shows me. He even teaches me to face evil. I have faced it. I have seen it. So everywhere I go today at 79 years old, I'm the only Indian in the group anywhere I go. I have, I, in this group, in this area, I joined the, I'm a quilter. I joined a quilter's guild here and I am the only Indian in that group. So I, I hear, I hear all these ideas and feelings about the white society and how they think and feel about us Indians. And these, these white people are retired, retired teachers of many years. They taught in the Indian schools on the reserves here. And they're retired nurses. They have treated native people in this area. And their opinions, I hear, I hear it all about this racism. And I ask God, explain to me what systemic racism is. And I understand, I understand. But you talked about the land. I know how the white settlers that came in this area, I know how they think. They do, there's a, when they look at me, they discuss it, and then they look at me, and then there's silence. Today, I asked the, the church that, that I became a deacon. I asked them right from each level rank in the church. I went right up to the national the national leader of Canada 
and every level I am always shunned or their silence from the local priest to the top, the top leader of Canada. I am shunned as an Indian. And I don't know what the white people still believe in. How do we undo that? Just like me, I went, it took me 10 years of the passion play to get rid of the layers and layers of all those lies. How? How do we do that? Only through education. And Kairos is a good step. Yeah. I'm sorry. Once I start talking about (laughs) the Lord our God, I cannot stop praising him, honoring him, loving him. So I love you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Thank you, Helen, for sharing. It's, um, I'm glad you shared and your story is a powerful one and one we need. We need you yourself to be part of us. And uh, we, this is um, just to undo all those lies that we're, we're told. So thank you for sharing and we need to keep, keep hearing that story. Um, I also wanna respect that some of us have uh, a need to hear, uh, have some lunch before our next meeting in, in at you know, about 40 minutes. And so um, let's wrap up the time of um, brainstorming. There's some people who made comments in the chat about what we can do and we'll keep the, our, our email is open. <laughs> we wanna keep hearing from you and we'll keep reaching out to the regions throughout the rest of the year. But um, please think of us when uh, you're thinking about how your groups can be active in your regions and especially Helen, you, um, if there's ways that Kairos can support you in your region, that'd be really good for us to hear too. Um, the last thing I wanted to do today before we, we leave and try to leave in a good way is uh, to hear from uh, Kairos Canada and Shannon has been our Zoom host today and will help us uh, um, is, is, can give us a bit of an update on what's going on in Kairos across the country. So Shannon. Thanks very much, Kevin. Uh, I'm very glad to be here and very excited uh, along with the rest of you to hear about what all is happening in the region and to get to meet some folks I haven't met before and to just uh, learn a little bit more about what is going on in the Prairies North region. And I thought that my role today would be to give you a few um, tips and and connecting points. I I consider that to be my role, to help with connecting points. I was uh, planning to give you a tour of the website to give you some ideas about um, how many resources are at your fingertips. I'm not sure if we want to take the time. We've had some really um, good discussion. Maybe I will just uh, do it, but shorten my plan. Um, So I'm gonna share my screen here. And so when I'm doing this, you know that if you have a question, um, simply unmute yourself and speak up because I can't see your raised hands or anything. One thing that um, I think people often miss about the uh, Kairos website is that if you scroll down on the homepage, all the news is right there. Um, So new information. And so there's a letter of solidarity with the Wet'suwet'en land defenders. There are going to be highlights of stories of courage about the um, activism against gender-based violence, Um, And so there is a story about the new Empowering Temporary Foreign Workers Partner. You can find that on the front page of the website. So all you need is kairoscanada.org. But there's lots more there. Um, You can learn about the various areas of work, ecological justice, gender justice, indigenous rights, migrant justice, and prophetic witness. That's what Kairos works on. Or if you know of a specific program, you know earlier um, 
Kevin and Wendy were talking about the work around curriculum change. That was the Winds of Change campaign, and that is still listed as a specific program here. The um, Mayor Hub may not mean anything to you, those letters put together, that's this one in the middle here, is the um, Mother Earth Resource Extraction, um, Mayor also being mother in French. And that, um, that hub there has stories of courage of women across mostly Latin America and North America, um, many indigenous women and other women who are um, putting their lives on the line uh, in the face of resource extraction. Um, and then you will also find in these program area about our, our recognition that Kairos has now existed for 20 years and building on the 30 previous years of ecumenical coalitions and work together. Um, so if you missed um, the events at the end of October that were um, marking those 20 years and that gathered the voices of um, all different folks, global partners from various different countries, um, indigenous folks and uh, some migrants and uh, those who are working on migrant justice, people from all different walks of life who came together to talk about how they've been part of Kairos over the past 20 years and what our hopes and dreams are for the work of Kairos in the next 20 years. You can find um, the videos of those sessions under this program here. There are resources to order. Um, there are uh, newsletters that you can read uh, if you missed past newsletters. Of course, we invite your donations and there are many different ways to do that, whether you would become a monthly supporter, which is really the backbone of the support for us um, that supports all the work that we're doing together. Or if you wanted to say, make a specific donation to the Women of Courage program, which is then matched by the Canadian government and you can see your dollars go even further. And I wanted to highlight that there are many ways to get involved. Um, to join Kairos as an individual or as a, a local initiative, whether that's a church committee or a congregation, is to simply sign up and tell us a bit more about yourself so that we can have this kind of open communication. I am going to click over to the advocacy and campaigns. I think this is a very important page. And so um, you'll see here the places where sometimes it's petitions, sometimes it's letter writing, sometimes it's um, other sorts of campaign work to get involved in. And you can always find the details here under get involved, advocacy and campaigns. This list also has our Kairos regional gatherings and someone asked if the uh, videos were available from the past gatherings and they are. First the registration of the current gatherings, but then the videos from last year's gatherings are also available on that page. So many resources. And finally, I'm going to just mention about um, this calendar of events which you are all invited to um, put your events on this. Anyone can um, open up this section of the website and add an event. And then myself or one of my colleagues would go in and approve it. We get some events from organizations that are not affiliated and we don't approve those. But anything from you, any size of group, whether it's your congregation, your region, um, if you have an event that is about these areas of work, ecological justice, gender justice, indigenous rights, and migrant justice and prophetic witness on those areas, um, we welcome you to share 
your events and activities with us. So that is a very brief overview. Um, you can also find how to contact various staff people, myself included, on that website. And we just invite you to uh, dig into the resources that are there. And if you have any questions, certainly ask. And my, I am here to support your work and your advocacy and um, let me know uh, any help that you would need with that. Thanks very much for being here and for giving me uh, a little window to talk with you and uh, looking forward to hearing this afternoon's presentations as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Shannon. And uh, yeah, it, and it's always encouraging to hear even what's happening across the country. I know there's other regional groups like ours doing exciting things across the country and we're not working alone. That's, that's a good thing to hear. Um, so now I just want to thank everyone for making time today on a, on a Saturday morning. For those in the Alberta region who had to get up early, <laughs> I thank you especially for coming, like myself. And, uh, but for everyone, um, the people who presented something uh, from your regions and the work that you're doing, these presentations are just a small part of the work that you're all doing um, that takes up most of your time. So it's just so encouraging to have that. And uh, I am looking forward to hearing from uh, the decolonization group and the uh, treaty land sharing network in about half an hour. And so I'm just going to invite all of you, if you weren't planning, please stick around. I'm sure it will be very good. And now to close us off in a good way, I'd like to invite Sean to, to give us a, a prayer or a benediction. Thanks, Kevin, and thanks everybody for uh, for being here and for adding your voice and for all the work that you do and all the stories that weave together to make us Kairos. So I thought I'd end with a little um, short prayer meditation attributed to Archbishop Oscar Romero from El Salvador from years ago, called a, a Pro Prophets of a Future Not Our Own. So let's hear these words of prayer together. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that God's reign always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program, even Kairos, accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. But rather, this is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way an opportunity for God's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. And so in that prophetic spirit, may we go in peace to be a blessing for all creation. Amen.